All right, record. We are we are started. Hi everyone. Welcome to the monthly version of our weekly meeting. Uh, we do this kind of special meeting on the first month, first Tuesday of the month, um, where we will include some updates from working groups. Um, so we're really happy to see everyone here, and um, hope you're all having an okay day and feeling all right. If you could please add your name if you feel like it into the minutes. Um, that have been posted in the chat, which we can also do again one more time, um, just in case. Let us know how you're doing, how you're feeling, what's going on. Um, looks like everybody's doing okay. No tornadoes, no tree stumps, no um, nothing major, it looks like. Some early lunches happening as well, so that's good. Um, yeah, um, so I wanted to add something in here really quick, but uh, really, we can just jump right in. Um, before I uh, get started on the agenda, I just wanted to give a, a quick shout out to Jaskrat, who um, was selected as uh, the Google Open Source Peer Bonus Program for his work with the Chaos Project. So, hooray, congratulations. That's a huge honor. We're so Thank happy. Thank you very much. Thank you very you much. It was really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just I mean, like... say, do you want to tell us a little about that? Yeah, that'd be great. Sure. So whatever the work I did as a part of Google Season Talks program uh, with the Kiosk community member, uh, I'm like working on the community handbook. So I was recognized by one of the Googler for doing a work with the Kiosk. And so it was really fun working with the Kiosk and I still plan to continue with the same work ahead. So let's see like how things go. So I'm very much excited for uh, getting the blog post up very much soon. So We're really, really happy for you. You well deserved, 100%. You did a fantastic job on our community handbook, and it's um, it's really come such a long way, and it's it's kind of um, acting as a model for other communities as well. So, just congratulations again on that. That's really, really fantastic. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Okay, now we um, can just hop into the rest of the agenda. Um, the first item is just uh, about the metrics. Um, just a reminder, in case you have not gotten this message in any of the working groups, um, the public comment period is now closed, closed for business. So um, we're going to do the official release. I say we, I mean, Georg and Kevin are going to do the <laughs> official release on Friday. So uh, this is the last week for working groups to kind of finalize any revisions that they want to make after that public comment period. I think that most are ready to go. I think there was the one that still kind of was being discussed in the common group, uh, which is technical fork. So that will probably come, to, well, it will have to come to fruition this week. So if you have strong feelings about that, you can hop in the common working group uh, meeting, which I think is on Thursday. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. Um, any comments, questions about this? No, thanks for everybody's work. Oh yeah, thanks for all the hard work and helping get metrics released. Yeah, we have a ton of metrics um, that are being released and a few that are being revised. So just fantastic work to everyone. Um, I know it's it's a lot, uh, to, especially in the midst of everything else that's going on to take time out of your days to work on this stuff, that's important. Um, so we really, really appreciate all of your work. Um, I don't know if we have <clears throat> like official, <clears throat> excuse me, if we have official representatives from each working group. Um, I kind of dropped in some updates that I knew about. So uh, let's just go around the table um, and we'll just go down working group by, by working group. So the first one is, is common and I don't know who wants to take that up since Don's not here. I mean, I think what you have there is pretty much what's happening in common. So with the, I think the push was on the new releases or the new released metrics. So I think that's really been the focus over the last month. And just um, a, a reminder uh, for anyone who's watching the video or doesn't have access to the minutes, the um, three metrics that were released or will be released on Friday, um, technical forks, which again, the name, we're kind of um, still discussing that name. Um, that the second one is burstiness, 
and the third one is review cycle duration within a change request. And all of those were long time uh, coming. So we're really happy to get those out the door for sure. Um, okay, does anybody have questions about those? I will say they were all super interesting metrics. So if um, that piques your interest, feel free to um, hop in the spreadsheet or on the website and, and link to it um, and have a read if you haven't yet, because they're really interesting. <laughs> the next working group is the D&I uh, working group. And I dropped in here. I don't think Matt Snell will be able to make it today, but I was just going to give a quick badging update on his behalf um, because the D&I badging initiative is just crushing it. It's doing so great. We're so happy. Um, Matt and the team have just worked so hard and it's really showing. And we have six events total that have gone through the process and all have gotten a gold badge um, based on their work for um, in prioritizing and, and their attentive, attentiveness to um, diversity, inclusion, belonging um, efforts in their events. So uh, you can see a list. Uh, oh, thank you, Matt, for dropping in a link to the GitHub uh, repo where you can see a list of all those events. So we're really happy. We're growing the team. Um, I know Matt has a few people that are um, new to the team that are just now joining uh, the reviewing team. So a huge shout out to those who have been doing that work so far. Um, that's been a lot. <laughs> so so thank you to them because um, it is you know a little bit of an intensive process. So um, so great job to all of them. And Matt Snell has also been doing a fantastic job working on the code that runs the, the badging part of that. Um, he has been making it a little smoother and also refining the process for how reviewers are selected. So it's uh, a little bit better, um, just iterating every day. So big shout out to Matt Snell, who's just worked tirelessly on this on this initiative and it's, he's just doing a fantastic job. Can I Any? make, oh, yeah, I was gonna share the screen, my screen really fast, just if people haven't clicked on it, but here are the events that have been gold badged, which is great. And I think one of the nice things to see is you can see that in the last month, approximately, there have been five that have been gold badged. And I'd just say that um, they've all been really developmental, I think. The process hasn't taken terribly long, at least from my perspective. So uh, in terms of like, I think it's a, maybe an hour of commitment from the reviewers you know, to kind of affirm the things that the events bring forward. Um, so anyway, I just thought I'd share this list. Awesome, awesome. Does anyone have questions, comments, something to share about this? Um, I thought I had something else, give me a second. Um, oh, did, are there new reviewers coming up? Is that you? I've sent a oh, few to Matt, that. yeah. Okay. Um, so I think that, um, I think maybe he's in the process of onboarding some new ones. Okay. Okay, maybe, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say maybe um, we could send something, I can touch base with Matt to maybe send something to the list. Cause I know that he, sometimes he does like onboarding events where he you know has a scheduled time for onboarding and we could maybe share that. Yeah, that would be great. I had not heard of um, something that he had already scheduled. So I don't know if he was, has anything in the books or if, he, if he's got tentative or if he's just doing it one-off, you know, one-on-one -on -one with people. Okay. So I'm I'll not sure, him. but that would be helpful. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Okay. Also, I know sometimes my emails go into spam. So <laughs> I hope he's getting them. I, I um, tried to ping him, but yeah, that would be great if you can just make sure. <laughs> because I am a spammer pretty much like, yes. Um, okay, so we also in the DNI group, um, I don't know if someone else wants to jump in, but I'll go ahead and do this real quick. Um, they released three metrics, which was chat, form, chat platform inclusivity, documentation accessibility and project burnout. Um, those were kind of uh, uh, part of the continual release, um, but they're now a part of the official March release. Does anyone have questions on those? All right, no questions. We're just moving along so fast. I love this. 
so efficient. Okay, risk. Sean, you want to talk about risk? Anybody else want to talk about well, risk? For, for risk right now, I think we've entered a really exciting period where we're discussing dependencies and how dependencies <clears throat> influence the soft. So right now our focus is really uh, upstream dependencies or the dependence, what my software or what the open source, a particular open source project depends on. And we've identified a wide range of tools and approaches. And uh, I think four candidate metrics that we're going to be actively working on during our sessions. Uh, this follows um, three months or so of really in-depth discussion about what dependencies mean, what what uh, what um, sort of security issues and other issues are posed by dependencies, sustainability issues, and and it really is kind of a, a nice. Um, uh, folk, we were at, we're on a very focused uh, rail toward the minimum viable product metrics right now. Um, so that's that's what's uh, most exciting about what's happening happening within risk. We've also got uh, gotten a, a good good deal of new participation related to that um, growing focus or narrowing focus or increasing focus. So I had a chance to talk with Richard. Is it Litauer? Is that how you say it? So he's at Sustain. Sustain is another group with an interest in sustaining open source projects. And they also have a group that's taking a look at dependencies. And I put a link in there. If you see that dependencies as considered as sustain, or at least just a conversation. Yeah. Um, and I've been inside, I've been in that conversation online yep. as well. And so the, 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 I'm thinking, Sean, that um, the folks from sustain are actually going to start joining the chaos risk meeting so that they don't have their own dependency discussion. And then right. you have your own dependency discussion and none the two shall meet. And, and, if I, and if I follow sustain structure, they really don't do calls in the way they do they really, the way we do, or they do them quite rarely. I'm not sure. Uh, the they, sustain sustain group does do calls but they're not regular like we have yeah. it it's more ad hoc yeah that's right yeah that's exactly what i was saying so um but the, the discussion board in this particular group is quite active right now so and then dan katz and arfan apparently have an interest in this too so they, the hope is is that we can just bring people to the risk working group while you're talking about dependencies yeah um, so that would be my hope also. And then the goal for at least like kind of my own personal goals, listening to the conversation are that there are a lot of people who have questions against a dependency map. So they want to understand dependencies, say for reasons of security or reasons of licensing um, in sustain. Sometimes the reasons for asking questions against the map are for um, funding support, right? So you're an organization and you rely on dependencies and you don't want them to fail. Um, so to me, the first step is even just mapping dependencies, whatever that might be. I know they come in a variety of different forms. And we, I think Sean actually developed a spreadsheet um, during our last meeting. That you could drop it in here, that'd be great. All, uh, those motivations. Yeah, I have to go find the risk work let me find the risk working group notes <laughs> but i keep asking okay like the question keeps coming up like is there a piece of open source software that's just out there and pretty accessible that helps um, uh, like develop a, a map of dependencies irrespective of what questions you ask against that map is there even a <laughs> is there open source software that's even doing this mapping in the first place um, so if people know about this, that would be great. I think our goal is to, to try to build that software or make it more available. I don't come across, but like uh, looking at the libraries, IO data, that was a map I used to build for my, one of the project, but not like there is a tool which is available. 
and it's like it's a really complex process it takes some time uh, what i recall is the only uh, map i found is on the github where they display the dependency map that's all i know about the mapping yeah, like GitHub, GitHub is starting to provide more information about dependencies, although they tend to not follow it. It's not turtles all the way down. They tend to go like a couple of hops at the most. So there's definitely um, there's definitely a limit to what I think they they could possibly do without creating the gigantic data set for all open source projects. I had a conversation yesterday with the team behind uh, Smart Shark, which is an open source tool for analyzing um, open source projects. And we have a podcast planned, so we'll talk more about it. But they said adding dependency information to their tool would be easy because they're analyzing Java's project specifically in the dependencies already available in the data. They just need to map it, which they said would be easy enough to do. But I invited them to Thursday. So hopefully on Thursday, we can talk with them more. I think if, if there can be like, um, uh, you know, like object files, like what you're talking about, I think, Georg, you know, like some sort of POM file or something, Yep. That, that's that, yeah. That makes it a little bit easier because it's bounded based on some input file that's known. It's still a good question, but it certainly bounds bounds it to whatever a POM file is written in XML or whatever. So I think one of the challenges is if I don't have that file. Then what do I do? <laughs> yeah. So for anyone interested in joining more discussions on dependencies or being a part of that group, they meet on Thursday, every other Thursday. So this Thursday is the one at 2 p.m. US Central, UTC minus six, Chicago time. So feel free to join that. All right, let's go ahead and go forward on the agenda. So we do have a few other things. We're doing great. Um, the next one is evolution. So evolution, um, I'm not sure who wants to talk about that. I can if nobody does. I can I can speak briefly about evolution. The we, the group supporting or the, the person who's been coordinating that, Carter Landis, uh, is starting a new job. So I've been coordinating those meetings and they've been quite lightly attended the last couple of times. So uh, we've adjusted the time so it's not like in a row of three chaos meetings. Uh, and I would, you know, there's certainly a number of metrics that uh, need development in the evolution area and uh, we would, we welcome uh, participation right now. We're, we're at a low, sort of a low point and, and I think uh, some of that's just people moving on to other working groups that are um, doing, you know, more current things. So, um, but, but there are, there are, there's work that needs to be done. So uh, I welcome all to the evolution working group and I would certainly welcome anyone to volunteer as coordinator or for, as tribute. <laughs> And those meetings um, now happen every other week. So um, tomorrow is the next one. And so right. that will be at, at 9 a.m. Right, it's the same time. It's just shifted the week that it's on uh, to avoid being in a lineup of three straight chaos meetings. So if anyone is considering um, jumping in to volunteer as a, as a um, coordinator for that working group, uh, you don't have to volunteer right this second. You can think about it, <laughs> sleep on it, um, and then come to the meeting tomorrow. Um, we'd love to have you and your participation there. So I have a question maybe for Sean, like an evolution, you know, what, 
is there something that seems to be missing? Because evolution was, if you recall, from a working group perspective, yeah. like the one that developed most metrics right out of the gate, because it was things related to like issues and pull requests and commits. Yeah, they're, the, they're sort of the, the basic atomic structure of a lot mm -hmm. of the other metrics. And I think, I think to some extent, a lot, a lot of the questions and metrics developed in other working groups are at this point relying on that core set of atomic metrics that were developed in evolution at the very beginning. So, you know, it may, it may be the case that that group doesn't need to meet more often, but before our, before any kind of decision like uh, that gets made, maybe, maybe a, a larger discussion involving people with an interest or who have contributed historically to that group, uh, we, could, we could actually make that the topic of discussion uh, this week, tomorrow, uh, just start out, you know, what do we need to do and what are the things that we're doing might also be well handled by one of the working groups that's more active because I think, I think to some extent, a, a good part of the community thinks that we did that work and it's in pretty good shape. So we don't need to focus on evolution separately, though there are there and but there are a set of uh, candidate metrics that are not developed and maybe maybe they belong in evolution and maybe they don't uh, and maybe if folks took a look at the list of metrics that are up for development it might might direct some additional attention toward it great okay Those are my That's thoughts fair. yep sean do you also think there might be merit in um looking at the the earlier metrics just with fresh eyes now that we've gone through the process so much and it's kind of the process itself has evolved so i know what uh in another group we we pulled up an old metric and started looking at it and found a lot of things that could be improved um, and iterated on from that kind of early early development of that metric so do you think that that might be a goal also for evolution it, it could be though i don't think anyone who's been in evolution well i guess i'm the one person left from the very beginning right now um, but we, we debated some of the metrics a good deal. And there, are, in some cases, I think yes. In some cases, like, what is a commit? I don't want to open that can of worms again. <laughs> like, oh, come on. Why not? It's just a shame. <laughs> no, just it was interesting to see kind of those earlier metrics with, you know, fresh faces and fresh eyes um, of bits and pieces that could be uh, expanded on even. So, um, just yeah. something to think about for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Let's go forward. Move ahead. Now I lost the agenda. Here it is. Okay. Um, Cause evolution did just release two new metrics for branch life cycle and the change request accept acceptance ratio. Um, so, you know, they are still cranking them out. Um, so if anyone wants to participate again, that's tomorrow at 9 a.m. U.S. Central. Um, okay, and then the next one is value. Uh, Vinod is here, so I'll let you yes. talk about the value group. Yeah, so we released one metric, uh, project popularity, uh, and we have revised one social listening metric system. And uh, right now, a lot of discussion is going around the academic value uh, in that group. So if anyone is interested in learning more about, especially in the two areas, academic value value and organizational value is where the value group is focusing these days a lot. So just if people don't know, um, universities are starting to um, start open source program offices uh, to deal with grant dollars that come in and then the technology that's produced in those projects and then tech transfer and how they think about open source in a university setting. And so Johns Hopkins has an open source program office. Rochester Institute of Technology has an open source program office. I think UC Santa Cruz has an open source program office. Um, so this is kind of an emerging trend right here. And the, the question is, is um, software has traditionally not been something that has uh, been valued in the tenure and promotion process at universities. So how, how does this conversation even, even start? 
Um, so anyway, that's the, the root of, of this academic value discussion. And there is, a, there is a whole other group that isn't us. It's called OSPO++, which is run by Jacob Green, who's in Baltimore. And he really focuses on bringing together a community of people interested in this. So we're kind of listening to what they're doing and trying to document some of the work that's coming out of that as well. And that group meets um, not this week, but next week, next Thursday at 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Anyone have questions or comments for Vinod? I think value. Oh, go ahead, Ray. No, no, I was just going to say it's, that's actually very interesting. Uh, I didn't, I mean, I, I, I think I knew about Johns Hopkins, but I didn't know it was uh, had a wider thinking it's almost like valuing i mean maybe i'm wrong but it's almost like valuing it as it's on maybe on a similar footing as like other traditional publications is that correct or it, it would yeah. i mean that argument's okay. a long argument right, <laughs> so like right. shifting I the academic imagine. shift away from journal right. publications will be difficult even um, the but, argument sorry even the argument is like uh, if uh, academics are producing a software that is being used by white audience, why are not they getting credit for it? Right. Even in their tenure, in their promotion, or in their domain. And how can we make that uh, valuable contribution uh, as uh, like showing their contribution as impactful? Yeah, I mean, I can see how important that could be i mean not just for like a cs or like information science but even feels like biology uh and others where i mean they rely heavily on like software right so so there was as an example um are you familiar with the software uh, matt plotlib sean mm -hmm. i'm guessing you are oh yeah yeah very <laughs> That's quite, I'm quite familiar with it. <laughs> it's, it's super, it's a super, pop, super popular piece of software um, with a reported around 315,000 projects depend on Matplotlib, right? And the most, and it's a science, piece of scientific software. And the most heavily cited publication, at least to date in academe, um, is a Lowry et al. publication from 1951 that has about 300,000 citations. It's like Matt, Matt Plotlib actually has more dependencies than the most cited paper <laughs> in academic history, yet Matt Plotlib doesn't, like, good job, it doesn't count. So <laughs> you're not making any impact at all. So <laughs> move, move on, move along. <laughs> I mean, so it seems encouraging changing. though that, yeah. yeah, that that's changing, you know, like at least it's kind of starting to bubble up to the surface, it seems like. So that's kind of encouraging. I think so too. Okay, if no more questions uh, or comments around value, then we'll just move along. So we have about 18 minutes. Um, so the next item on the agenda is to talk about the Google Summer of Code. Um, we submitted our ideas and <clears throat> work the I think Sean and Georg are creating and the, the mentors are creating the micro tasks for all the ideas. Um, so that's just kind of a status update for anyone who's interested in where that stands. When do we find out? I think March Tuesday 9th. Next week, okay. Tuesday next okay. week. Gotcha, cool, thank you. So very soon. Um, this next item on the agenda is uh, mostly for Sean. Um, <laughs> I wasn't sure if we had finally decided or, or officially decided that March 13th would be the next Augur Hackathon, yeah, Sean. We, we do have one set up for March 13th uh, that okay. in our discussion we did decide on. Um, we wanted to bring it back to this group to see if we could get some working group focused hackathons uh, organized and scheduled as well, where we would actually build out 
metrics that are defined in the working groups kind of as an active act of hacking. And <clears throat> so I, uh, risk is one that I think would, would be great. I think common has some that, that pose really good opportunities as does value. So uh, that, that might be a great place to start. Evolution certainly, I, you know, is a, you know, it's less active right now, but it might be a good candidate. Obviously, diversity and inclusion, some of those um, tool-based metrics are more complex, uh, not yet suitable for a hackathon because they involve machine learning. Um, so yeah, I'd like, I'd, I'd, I'd like to see if uh, maybe when I visit, maybe I'll visit each of the working groups in the next meeting and s spend a few minutes pitching that idea um uh, in in the working group in the working groups um and the other thing we discussed which we haven't scheduled but i think is important especially based on what was actually a really successful asia pacific hackathon uh last friday night u.s time saturday morning in beijing is is having some um and you and i discussed this a little bit these these two and i think we talked about it in the last meeting these you know, two hour, two, three hour sessions where we get individuals who are interested in contributing to open source. And these are often students or candidate Google Summer of Code students get their local environments configured because there's at this point I've got, I won't give you all, I won't enumerate them here for time, but there are three major patterns of people getting lost in the basic configuration of Python uh, databases and uh, their local operating systems compiling tools. Um, so I can go into technical depth if folks want, but I, I kind of doubt they do. So getting, getting people through those, get those hurdles first, like as a separate activity, it's a learning opportunity more than a hackathon. Sean, did we want to try to schedule that before the hackathon then? Yeah. That would be I, like next um, week. So I think I think for for the March 13th hackathon, we'll we're just gonna go forward without doing that. But then I want to get those on the calendar on a, on a pretty regular basis, maybe at least once a month. And in advance of a particular hackathon. And then I mean I've been I've been talking with Willem um about some ongoing collaboration that may may be fruitful um for helping getting a, a regular hackathon scheduled in the asia pacific region as well yeah that sounds awesome i mean we're figuring i mean we're figuring this out like we haven't done this before i haven't done this before um but but i think it's generating some interest in auger i think we've identified a few uh, promising Google Summer of Code students through this process. And I think it's it's giving some of the folks with more technical skills a way to contribute that that they don't really have otherwise, because you, you can't really do anything to build a metric and software in a one hour or 50 minute working group meeting. But hackathons are kind of made for that sort of thing. Ruth has a question. Uh, okay, it's not really a question, but it's kind of like a comment. So I think uh, the idea is really great because our, our Stephen should be on the school, yeah. So um, he actually reached out to me. He's, he wants to like apply to GSOC through Chaos. So, you know, I was trying to, I, I had the call with him that was like two weeks ago or last week. I was trying to, you know, um, sort of like a little onboarding to chaos, but since I wasn't contributing via um, Augur and um, code, I, I didn't actually know what to say, right? So I, I, think, I think it's a really great idea, definitely a good idea. It, it, it will at least uh, help those coming in and understand how to set up their environment, who to go to, and they're about to so, uh, yeah. definitely support it. Uh, that's, that's great. I think that's good to hear, Ruth. And um, those those hackathon dates, or those those dates, sort of the, 
get your machine configured dates will be coming out by, I, well, it's Tuesday. So for sure, by, th by the next newsletter uh, next week, we'll have dates, we'll have dates for those. And I think, I think we were doing this actually reasonably well when the world we lived in allowed us to gather at FOSDEM and OSF summits regularly because we had routine hackathons with the tools during those times. Uh, and, and so this is, I think, really kind of emerging as a need out of the absence of being able to get together. And uh, just to, to address Kevin's question, uh, we do not have registration open for that hackathon on the 13th yet, but that will be very soon coming. So uh, as soon as we have that, we'll put it on the mailing list and in the yeah. newsletter and probably Twitter. Yeah, Elizabeth and I are getting good at the copy paste, knowing <laughs> we need to change from hackathon to hackathon mechanics of the site we use for registration. <laughs> Yes, I'm an excellent copy paster. <laughs> well, I, I think it's still been a, we still go over it together because I think we're both figuring it out. And so it's two <laughs> eyes, we don't miss anything. Or four eyes, I guess, between us. <laughs> many, what is it? Many eyes make few mistakes, something like yeah. that. I don't know. The premise of open source itself. Yeah, right? The shallow, shallow bugs comment. What is that? It's the many eyes make for shallow oh. legs. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. All right. Um, it looks like we have about 10 minutes, and we have one more thing on the agenda, and then we'll open it up to anybody who has anything else at the end. Um, so I will let Matt G talk about this. I'm pretty sure he put sure. that on there. Yeah, this is just, it's just the update for everybody. So we're doing, as all of you know, we're kind of doing a reflection on the chaos project itself. Um, with respect to our own DNI practices and an effort to make the chaos project more inclusive to everybody. Um, and then also articulating um, what we do and kind of through that learning process uh, to help other communities do the same in the future. And so one of the things we wanted to do was to identify um, some individuals who can help. And one of the individuals we were hoping could kind of serve as a liaison between knowing how the chaos project works um, as well as with any external people who provide insight for the project and Justin Flory has agreed so I just always want to say thank you I was hoping he would be on here but um, anyway we've started uh, kind of chatting and identifying uh, some external folks who could also um, provide support in this area so just that that's all that's just the update there I have barking dogs, apologies. Um, who else has something that they want to ask or talk about or bring up? Anybody? Uh, I do, if that's okay. Yes, um, of course. So I have a friend who works primarily in uh, communication and virtual communities uh, on an interpersonal level. And we were thinking about running a uh, podcast with him, essentially talking about um, those really weird moments when you think everything is going great and then an interpersonal conversation happens in a community that just kind of throws you for a loop and you don't know what happened, you don't know where it is. So we're trying to find some really nice salient examples of those moments where you're like, wow, that was surprising. I did not see that coming. Um, so I'm wondering if any of you have any of those stories that you would like to share with us and then get his opinion on an interpersonal level, what happened in those projects, et cetera. So how anonymous are they? <laughs> uh -huh. How anonymous are these interviews? entirely up to you. Um, if you don't <laughs> want to put your name on it, just let us know and we'll just kind of leave it there. Um, but I mean, there's contentious aspects in interpersonal relationships and then there's the not so contentious kind of funny ones. We're looking for both. So if you want to put your name, awesome. If you don't want to put your name, totally okay. Thank you. Benia, do you want to drop your email in the... Um minutes here. So if someone does want to reach out to you, they can. 
Oh, sorry, I'm muted. Yeah, absolutely. And um, don't worry uh, too much about it because it's just one of those chaos things where it'll just be him and me and other people uh, on the podcast essentially just talking through these stories. So if you don't want the information shown, just don't give it to us. And we're more than happy to kind of discuss the situation. Uh, one other suggestion you might want to, I don't know if you're available at the DNI um, working group tomorrow, but that might also be a group that uh, has some stories to share around that. Um, they meet at 10 a.m. tomorrow if you're available. If not, I can, um, oh, I'm not available tomorrow either, but um, somebody can, <laughs> can spread the message along to, on your behalf if you can't make it. Um, thanks, Vinya. Anyone else have anything? We have about five minutes left. So anybody else? Questions? I'm good. I am good. Fantastic. All right. Um, well, I guess that's it. You all get five minutes back. You're welcome. <laughs> From the amazing thanks, facilitation everybody. skills. <laughs> everybody have a great day. We will see you bye. next week. Thanks for coming. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye, everyone.